A warm Saturday evening in June, interrupted in the most brutal of ways. Two years on and the horror of those fatal 10 minutes around London Bridge and the chaos that ensued, still as raw as ever. Despite a rigorous investigation, I still don't know what happened precisely to my son during the first attack. We are now aware that there were a lot of missed opportunities to neutralize at least one of the attackers who was known as very dangerous. If you had the fact that despite Westminster attack, London Bridge had no barriers. So I think this attack could have been preventable. But the coroner concluded today that he was not persuaded the chances lost by police and MI5 could have realistically saved lives. Over the last eight weeks, the court has heard acts of bravery and painstakingly scrutinised the grim details around each of the eight victims' deaths. Details of how Christine Archibald and Xavier Thomas were mown down on London Bridge before the terrorist hired van crashed into railings. Three men emerged with 12-inch knives and set upon Sarah Zelenak, who toppled over in her high heels. They then turned on James McMullen as he tried to help her up. Nurse Kirsty Bowden was stabbed after she went to the aid of Frenchman Alexandra Pijar, who also died. The attackers also killed Ignacio Echeverria as he fended off the terrorists with his skateboard. The coroner described how Sebastian Belanger had bravely fought back as he was stabbed by all three men. Sebastian was a very person. He loved what I call life. He was very sure of himself. C'était ses, ses principales qualités et euh, on l'adorait pour ça. It was a few days after the attack before it was confirmed Sebastian had been killed. J'avais pris l'initiative de moi-même de ne pas le dire à ma mère au départ, hein, de lui cacher. C'était c'était plus que compliqué en fait. Enfin, C'est une en fait ça, 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 ce sera la période de ma vie hein, réellement. Où, Qui sera et qui a été le plus compliqué. The inquest explored details not just of those who died, but those who killed. Youssef Sagba, Rashid Redwan, and the ringleader Kurambut went around Borough Market stabbing indiscriminately before being shot dead. The court heard how Butt had been under MI5 and police monitoring for suspected attack planning for two years. We are just saying we will pray. But they don't believe us. They say we still he was part of Anjim Chowdhury's Al Muhajirun Islamist Network and appeared on a Channel 4 documentary about jihadis the year before the attack. But the Scotland Yard team investigating him did not watch the programme and Butt was not prosecuted after they later found evidence of him disseminating ISIS propaganda. Crucially, investigators failed to spot Curran Butt was regularly meeting with his fellow attackers at a gym owned by an alleged terrorist. A vital warning wasn't passed on to the police when Curran Butt's own brother-in-law reported him to the anti-terror hotline. With regards to the investigation itself, and with the benefit of hindsight, we know certain things could have been done differently. This was the third of five terrorist attacks in the UK in 2017, a year which was unprecedented for those of us working to combat terrorism in terms of the pace, range and diversity of the threats that we all faced. The barrister representing most of the victims' families had asked the coroner to criticise the security services. He said they were bewildered as to why Curran Butt hadn't been more closely monitored. Instead, today, the coroner concluded that MI5 and the police shouldn't be criticised. He said generally their investigation had been thorough and vigorous. Instead, he chose to criticise Curran Butt's family, who he said should have done more. How surprised were you when you found out the police knew about the main attacker? Ça a été forcément un, un moment de colère. L'enquête euh, m'a montré réellement qu'il y avait de, de fortes suspicions déjà depuis quelques années. Euh, il semblait appartenir déjà à une grande mouvance euh, radicalisée. PC Mirka found Sebastian Belanger heavily bleeding. She was the first on the scene. Taking it in turns with my colleague to um, give chest compressions and rescue breaths while swapping over with my colleague, um, covering, covering the exits and entrances. Just 
kept saying that he's doing good and to, to stay with us. This incident took place just over two months after five people were killed in a similar attack on Westminster Bridge. The coroner concluded there was an arguable breach of the state's duty to protect life by failing to put protective barriers on London Bridge where two of the victims were killed. Today concludes the official search for answers into how these eight people died. Thanks so much. Family of the victims and those who tried to save them, inextricably linked forever. Well, as we heard in Anya's report, the coroner heavily criticised the family of the main attacker, Kuran Butt, for not reporting his extremist views to the police and the security services. But his brother-in-law, Usman Dar, told the inquest that he had called a police counter-terrorism hotline once, 18 months before the attack, after an argument with the attacker, he says, over his increasingly radical views. That information was not passed on to MI5. Usman Dar has since separated from his wife and has fallen out with her family. But earlier this week and before the coroner gave his verdict, Jon Snow went to meet him. Usman, when and how did you become aware that your brother-in-law was being radicalised? During 2015, um, a lot of conversations and uh, messages that were exchanged uh, they were getting extremer, they were getting vile. You apparently had to sort of take him on and you two had to be separated. Can you tell me what happened? Um, the conversation was the burning of a Jordanian pilot. Uh, again, um, he justified it using historical battles. We're talking about that Jordanian pilot who was shot down over Raqqa in Syria and then burnt by the people on the ground. Yes. That absolutely, that, that really pushed me over the edge because um, we, we came, you know, we, we squared up to each other and we had to be, we had to be pushed away by, our, by my mother-in-law. How soon after that incident did you decide to call the hotline? The next day. Really? That was a big decision. And what does calling a hotline involve? Was there any human at the other end? Yes. And they questioned you? Yes. Uh, they were very interested in who I was. I do remember uh, when I mentioned his name, they kept asking me who I was, my relationship. Oh, I gave them a, a detail where he lived, mm. uh, the conversations we had. It was as if they knew who I was speaking about. When I thought about the conversation I had, I was like, you know, do they know already? I hope they do, which is, is, is good if they know. They can, they can stop anything from happening. And did, did the hotline ever call you back again? No, there was no response. This was 18 months before London Bridge, before the attack. What happened? You just sort of let it pass or did you try again? Well, during this time, I was hoping that he would be monitored at least. After the attack, when his name first surfaced, what did you do? Um, so we found out the next morning from my wife's other sister-in-law so we rushed the Your wife being the sister of the attacker the attacker yeah as i turned into their road i saw um, black suvs four or five of them masked uh, armed police and uh, i stopped my car because i thought if i get near there we are all going to get arrested because i saw uh, some of the family members on their knees uh, handcuffed so I stopped the car. I was about to turn around. Uh, my wife, she jumped out of the car and she ran towards the flat. So whatever they were doing to monitor your brother-in-law failed? It didn't, it didn't come to me uh, that I had, uh, I had phoned them. But, you know, over, over a few hours, certain hours, I sort of realised that they have failed. And then over the next couple of weeks, the chair lady of the Met Police admitted on camera that they had information. They tracked him, but there was no evidence. So they, you know, they, they let him be.